So if you manually go to this location, uh, C drive, you'll find a folder over here that is uh, Java tutorials. Yeah. So this is uh, this folder is empty. Basically, it, it got some metadata file. This is for Eclipse to understand. You need not to do anything with it. Once the Eclipse is opened, uh, you're gonna get a welcome screen, right? Just close this screen and this is your Eclipse. So here uh, you'll be maintaining your project hierarchy, right? Uh, so whatever project you're gonna maintain, uh, the hierarchy for that project will be maintained in the project explorer. Here you're gonna write some code and here you're gonna get the output of that code. Now very first thing uh, we're gonna do is to create a new project. So since we are working on Java, uh, Eclipse is used for many other languages as well, right? So since we are working on Java, I'll be creating a new Java project. So how to create a new project? New project. I'll just right click over here. I'll go to new and then select the project. So as soon as I select the project, I'll get an option Java project. I'll click on this. I'll click on next and uh, give some project name. So I'll say Java lecture one and click on finish. You can give any name to this project. So I'll just click on finish and click on yes. So you'll see uh, the Java project has been created over here. If I expand it, you're gonna see uh, a source folder over here and you're gonna see the Java system library, JRE files, JAR files over here. Right, so this JRE uh, adds in automatically as soon as you create a new Java project, right? It basically contains all the Java libraries that you required when you're working on Java, right? Now this is a source folder. Now if, if we again go back to uh, the actual location where this project is, you're gonna find this in this workspace, a Java lecture one has been created. If I open it, you'll find a source folder a bin folder, right? The source folder is basically whatever code that will gonna write the dot Java file will be maintained at this location. And similarly uh, to that uh, Java file, a dot class file will be maintained under the bin folder. So right now both folders are empty, right? You need not to worry about these folders, these things. These are basically used by Eclipse, right? The only thing you need to work on is the source folder. So whatever that you're going to create will be stored inside this source folder. Now, uh, before we start writing Java code, we first need to understand the concept of classes and objects, right? So Java is purely based on uh, the oops concept, right? And uh, over here, if I open up the next lecture, uh, PPT, sorry, the PDF file, right? You'll see, uh, we're gonna see what a class is and what an object is, right? So Java class can be defined as a template or a blueprint which describes state behavior of its object. Now, what does this mean? Let's uh, take up a scenario. Let's say uh, there is a car manufacturing company, right? That manufactures the car. Right now, every car you can see has uh, like four tires, has a body, has two tail lights. Right, so now the car design is based on some blueprint, right? And uh, based on that blueprint, the cars are manufactured, right? So, that blueprint we're gonna call it as a class. Right, so uh, cars could be of many types. There, there could be different manufacturers. Uh, the, the the tires could be of a different manufacturers. Right, some some cars uh, give more mileage. Some cars give less mileage. So those are called as objects. So the designing of the car is based on some blueprint, and here we refer the blueprint as a car. 
and the cars that are being manufactured is the object that's been generated from that Clio frame right so the manufactured cars are the actual objects right so in other way, words we can say that a class is used to create objects without a class there cannot be any objects right now uh, let's take uh, one more example let's say uh, i have a form right which is basically a, a template in that form i have certain fields right a fields like name roll number address date of birth right now i distribute uh, these forms amongst various people right and what they do they, they fill up these forms and they send it back to me so when i was distributing that form that was basically a template right that was a standard template and when i got it back from everyone right by filling up all the information so those become an object right so that is what we have said that a class can be defined as a template and it is used to create object so without a class an object cannot be created uh, now let's say i have a class over here that is tree right now again i have some attribute height i've given that attribute to this tree and i have uh, defined the height of this tree as two meters same way i have created another instance of this class and here uh, i have defined the attribute height as five meters same way i can have one more uh, instance of this class right and i can define the height as four meters right so i can have n number of instances or we can say n number of objects created from this class so these will be the objects that are being uh, created from this class and this class will actually act as a blueprint so the process of creating an object from a class is called as instantiation and uh, the object itself is called as an instance of this class now uh, let's see how to create a class so uh, whenever we uh, we are creating a class we have a keyword that is class right now let's see uh, let's go to eclipse and create a new class uh, how we going to create a new class i'll just right click on uh, on the source folder i'll say new and i click on this class right now we get all these things over here what is the package uh, what is the name and what are all these things so let's let's just not worry about all these things at the moment right i'll just give the class name as day one you can give any name to this class right so i'll just click on finish and as soon as i click on finish you'll find a sample code over here public class day one right uh, basically a class is you can just write it like this uh, class day one and this is uh, the open bracket and the closing bracket right so let's see again uh, class is a keyword right and this is the name that we have given to this class and now this is uh, we can say this is uh, the start of body class body and this is basically the end of the class body now let me increase the font size so i'll go to help uh, uh, sorry windows and references and go to journal color fonts basics text font and here i'm going to increase the text font so i'll make it to 16 all right so i think now it is more visible all right now this is uh, how we create a class now based on this class we will gonna uh, this is actually a blueprint right based on this blueprint we gonna create the object from this class right now let's under let's first understand what uh, an object is 
So uh, before understanding what an object is and how it is created, we should first understand what is a difference in instant and uh, versus instance, right? People generally get confused on this, right? So instant is, uh, it is basically uh, with respect to, if you're talking about uh, with respect to time, so that is uh, what we call as instant. And it has nothing to do with Java, right? It has nothing to do with objects, right? So uh, objects are basically instants, right? Instance is nothing. It's uh, like you are making a copy or uh, you can say clone. So when you are creating an instance of this class, it means that you are cloning that class or you are creating and uh, creating a copy of this class, right? So this is what we, we have seen over here. Uh, like when I was creating this tree, uh, I've defined the height as two meters. I was basically copying this uh, tree and giving it uh, the parameters as two meters, right? And same way I have created another clone of this tree and given uh, this tree a height as five meters, right? So just uh, I have done changes to that clone, right? So I've just uh, uh, cloned this class and I've done some changes and I have given the height as two meters to the first one and five meters to the third one. Similarly, I can clone this class n number of times and I can give different behaviors uh, to uh, the clone and that is what we call object uh, that is being formed from this class and this process is uh, called as a uh, instance of a class right now let's see uh, how the objects are created uh, like uh, we just understand what the objects are objects are nothing but the instance of a class right a single class can create any number of unique uh, objects right so so uh, let's say I have a class student over here and I have all these records, name and role number, right? Let's say I give uh, a name as uh, Jenna and a role number as uh, uh, one, then uh, an object is formed, right? Similarly, I give the name as John and I give the role number as two, the, another object will be formed. Similarly, I can create n number of objects from this class and there, there is no limit in object creation. I can cre I can keep on creating objects from this class. So uh, it means that had there been uh, no concept of classes and objects, then we would have uh, uh, been writing code uh, to uh, do all these things uh, separately for uh, all these people, right? We need to write the same code for the first person, the same code for second person using all these attributes. Right. So with the help of this class and object concepts, it makes our life very easy. Right. So that we can treat this class just as a template. And based on that template, we can uh, create as many objects as we want. So uh, first of all, we will going to see how we're going to create these objects. Right. So in order to uh, run your code in Java, you need to have a main method. A main method is something like this public static void main right this is a method uh, you need not to worry about what public is what static it is what void is right we're going to cover all these things in these tutorials right so the main thing we need to know that in order to execute any code in java we need to have this main method so let's see uh, how we're going to create an object of this class right so i'll just uh, rename the class i don't give it uh, day one i'll just give it the name as this right and i'll save this all right so i'll give public test public class test right and i'll rename this to test so don't worry about it what public is i'm going to explain it to you later on right so how to create an object of this class so i'll say test t equal to new test right this is how we're going to create an object of this class now what is the object over here what is the object over here many many people get confused in this people say 
most of the people say that this is an object now with, without this as well i can create an object of this class if i remove this this is also an object of this class right i can write this n number of times and n number of times an object of the class will be created right now uh, let's see over here uh, if you talk about objects uh, this new is the keyword uh, whenever we say new then a new object of this class is created right so each time when we say new each time a new object of that class is created so it means that if we, if we want to see uh, how many objects a class can create so what i can do uh, uh, i'll just remove uh, all these from here i'll just uh, write a for loop don't worry about it what the loop is right i'll going to explain you just uh, see what i'm doing over here so i'm actually writing uh, infinite infinite loop right and inside this i am just creating the object of this class and what i'll do i'll uh, uh simply print i'll write system dot out dot print talent this is how we're going to print in java and i'm going to print the numbers of times this loop is uh, executed so as soon as i run this let's see as soon as i run this it will going to tell me how many times an object of class can be created so when I run this, you can see it is going in uh, 100,000 millions, right? Till the time my memory will going to support, it will going to create an object of this class, right? So there is, there is uh, no limit to it, right? This is a, a, a button through which we can terminate this program. So it can create an object n number of time of a single class so we can we can create we can clone this class n number of times we can clone this template n number of times right so there is no limit up to how many objects you can create from this class so now uh, where where these objects lives in a memory so if we talk about uh, where these objects exist in a memory right uh, these basically exist inside java heap right a heap is nothing but uh, it's it's only a memory space taken by jvm java virtual machine from the os right so all objects are created in this heap uh, itself and whenever uh, the jvm comes around a new keyword it creates an object in that heap right and when there is no no space in that heap like if, if say you have created n number of uh, objects and the space uh, it's it's uh, like out of the limit then the java virtual machine the jvm will gonna throw out of memory error right now uh, what is this jvm and how you gonna ins install it how will you make sure that jvm is installed on your machine or not so will you ever gonna install this jvm right you're never gonna install it right it will uh, gonna come uh, either let's say uh, you're gonna install jdk jdk or you're gonna install uh, jre right so uh, when you install jdk it comes along with jre now jdk uh, contains the java compiler since uh, in case you are a java developer or you're writing a java code so you need this jdk the java compiler plus uh, once you download jdk it comes along with jre now this jre uh, comes with jvm and some library files right now uh, you might have seen uh, on some website uh, if, if you are running something i mean uh, some website is running some special player right it wants you to install java right in that case it installs jre on your machine it does not install jdk so jre is uh, where you wherever you want to execute the java code right the java program you need this java runtime environment right so once you download jdk it comes along with compiler as well as the java runtime environment now uh, this is how uh, we have seen uh, how we uh, create first object from from a class right 
Now, uh, garbage collection. Now, what is uh, a garbage collection? It is basically a many mechanism uh, provided by JVM. Now, again, JVM is doing some work over here. It's actually uh, cleaning out uh, the heap. I mean, whenever, uh, like, uh, let's say uh, we create new objects, right? So if any object does not have any reference variable attached to it, then JVM will gonna uh, put that object inside the garbage collection, right? It, it will gonna clean out the heap. It will remove it from the heap. Now, what is uh, this uh, reference variable? Now, which reference variable we are talking about it, talking about over here? So let's say, uh, let's say over here, I have written new test, right? Let, let me comment out this. So when I write uh, test, t equal to new test now how java reads it this is a basically uh, a, 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 like this is an assignment operator so for the for the time being what i'll do i'll just remove this statement right now this t this t is basically we call it as a reference variable right which refers to the object of this class now, now for the time being, I mean, just let uh, let me know whether it is uh, referring to any object or not. Now, let's say uh, uh, right now, if it is not referring to any object, then what should be there inside uh, this variable? Let's say if I uh, remove it from here and I just paste it over here, right? And I'll write static. Now don't worry about what static is i'm going to explain it to you later on so we'll we'll just see what the value is there inside this uh, reference variable if it is not pointing to any object if i just uh, print this t and if i run this see it is going to print null so null does not mean zero right null means it's nullified there is no value inside it right so, or, or you can say, let's say there are some time, uh, uh, let's say if a number uh, 25 is divided by zero. So what is the output that you're going to get, right? Which is uh, a nullified, right? Uh, infinite, uh, like numbers that you're going to get. So this is what we uh, got from here. This is basically null, right? And what if I'll do, uh, if I'll again, take it from here, Right. If I remove it from here again, and here I create an object of this test class, right? So what I'm doing, uh, first the left hand side will be executed and then the right hand side will be executed. So what happens, I've created a reference variable for this class and when the object of this class is created, the reference is pointed to the object of this class right now now when i run this you can see this is actually uh, printing the location where the object is being formed right this test is the class name and this is some hash code of which tells the physical location of the object in the heap all right now, uh, similarly, uh, I can create one more object uh, that is new test of this class, right? And I'll not point it uh, to any reference, right? I'll not create any reference. I'll not assign any reference variable to it, right? So which will be eligible for garbage collection? This is the one because this does not have any object reference pointing to it, right? So when we have created, uh, like when we have executed the loop and when we have created object from uh, this class, so you, you have seen there were millions of objects that were created, right? So all of them were eligible for garbage collection, right? And JVM uh, manages that jar garbage collection automatically, right? So we need not to uh, uh, like manually uh, add them into the garbage collection. Java manages it automatically. Now similarly, uh, I can also say t equal to null. Then this uh, object will now be eligible for garbage collection. 
Now, if I'm uh, uh, like mentioning garbage collection over here, I'm not going going to uh, like you're not going to see anything over here, right? It it will be uh, like uh, if this is eligible for garbage collection, then what a JVM is doing, it's clearing out it it out from the heap, right? So the memory that was allocated uh, to this object will now be gone, right? Now. Uh, let's come to variable right what are java variables and its type right so variables uh, are nothing in just the namespace of a memory which stores the data right so there are basically two types of variables available primitive variables and reference variables and reference variables are those variables which stores only the address of an object so reference variable as in this is a reference variable it can only store uh, this uh, the reference of this object right of, of, of a class object right i cannot say uh, t equal to one two three uh, i can store this number inside it i cannot say it like this i cannot say uh, test t1 equal to this right you cannot store an integer or any string inside it right i can say test t1 equal to t see it can only and only store a reference of the object of that class right so this is what a reference variable is and it is also called uh, as non primitive variables so uh, before uh, assigning before creating a reference variable we have to specify which object of the class it is going to refer uh, and let's say uh, i create a new class uh, over here i'll create a class with the name home right now over here if i write i can write home home edge so here i need to uh, specify uh, this reference belongs to which class right i cannot say uh, home edge equal to new test this is uh, for the time being it is not possible right uh, with the current example right so whatever reference that we are pointing to a class should be referred to the object of that particular class only right when we are gonna see some advanced concepts when we start working on uh, inheritance and polymorphism then we're gonna see how we can uh, refer uh, a class uh, uh, reference to some other class object right so at that point of time we're gonna see that now these are uh, just the fundamentals of java right these things uh, cannot be come in a day right these things cannot be learned right you cannot learn all these things right it it comes along with the practice the more you practice the more time you will gonna devote on on uh, like these concepts uh, the main thing is that you need to understand how these things works right so you need not to learn them you just need to practice them and it will gonna come uh, like really soon all right so in this module uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, this much only in the next module we're gonna see some uh, primitive and non-primitive data type right all right so thanks a lot